everyone. Welcome back to another week of Bulletproof Hygiene Podcast. I am excited to have you joining me today alongside with my guest, Vicki Landers. And Vicki is a professional speaker, certified professional coach, physical therapist, and founder and CEO of In Progress Coaching. She works with healthcare professionals and organizations, helping them return to their purpose of healthcare, which as we know, is caring for the patient. She has worked in healthcare as a clinician, educator, leader, IT analyst, and home care administrator for more than 30 years, and she seeks to help her clients avoid dread, boredom, and annoyance when it comes to their careers. So Vicki, I want to say welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. This is going to be fun. Yes, it is. So I'm really glad that you're joining us and excited to get your take on how to show up for our patients because you are coming from a different perspective, really outside of dentistry itself. And I think that's a really important vantage point because though we may feel like our obstacles and challenges in dentistry are unique, and honestly, I think they are, our reasons for how we show up, face and overcome these challenges are not necessarily specific to dentistry, but more about who we are as humans and where we are coming from when it comes to the mental aspect. And I know that you have some really great things to share with us today on that front. So to kick it off, can you tell me a little bit about how you came to be a speaker and coach for healthcare professionals and these organizations and what that mission looks like? So this has been a long time coming. I was a practicing PT for a while, moved into leadership. And one of the things that I just, I keep noticing is that people tend to lose focus and I was, I was talking to a friend of mine who was actually trying to figure out what she was doing with her physical therapy practice. And one day she's like, you would be a really great coach to which I responded. I don't know what coaching is. <laughs> and I investigated it and I'm not usually somebody who does things quickly. I take my time, but I, it, it just felt like such a right thing to do that I ended up um, becoming a coach within, within about a year after that conversation so that's, and coaching was very different than I thought it was. Um, coaching is really about helping people figure out what's the best and what's the right thing for them and really kind of getting to the core of who they are and why, why they're doing what they're doing. So that's sort of, that's the coaching piece of this. The speaking piece of this, I taught for a continuing education company for PTs and OTs. And I ended up teaching at a local university to undergrads about chronic disease and exercise. And it just, it's so much fun to watch people like learn something new and be able to have things fall off the wall spontaneously. I don't know that you saw that. <laughs> anyway, to help people like see light bulbs and to see and think about things and literally walk away from a conversation with a completely different perspective. And hopefully that perspective is changing something inside of themselves so that they show up better for everyone in their lives, whether it's their family, their friends, or their patients. I love that. I know, and I, and I know that you can resonate with this, but people who work with patients do feel a lot of pressure and stress um, really from all directions. And I'll say in dentistry and specifically hygiene, we struggle with, you know, everything from our time constraints and getting all the steps done. You know, we've got those difficult non-compliant patients. We've got technological challenges, expectations coming from the doctor and the practice. You know, we may have team conflict or dysfunction and really trying to just stay productive and sane through all of it with a smile on our face as we welcome the next patient. So, you know, we've got a lot going on as we're caring for our patients every day. And I know this is what you're all about. What's something that you recommend strategy-wise that can help people cope so that they can fo focus more on the patient and not get lost in all those other things? Yeah, the everything you said is, is just so true. The amount of distractions that we have. So one of the things that I like to talk about are the, the six distractors and they're, they're spiritual, mental, emotional, physical, environmental, and social. And what we realize, or what we can start to realize is what's your biggest distractor? It may be the environment you're in. It may be the social, there may be too many people who keep, keep trying to talk to you. And so the first thing to do is recognize which one of these things is actually the thing that keeps being in your head that you keep thinking about and you're so annoyed about and just recognize it, name it, 
And then once you can recognize the things that are really bothering you the most, that's when you can start to do something. And the doing something might just be, hey, you know what? This patient is having a horrible day. This patient is reacting to what I'm doing, but they're not reacting to me. It's not about me. Right. They are reacting for whatever is going on with them. So the dentist who is who is like on you to get something done. It's about them wanting this thing done. It's not about you. And we tend to just react yes. instead of taking that moment and being like, okay, that's what they want. That's about them. I'm going to take a moment. How do I want to respond instead of react? And, you know, a lot of people will do this in a different way. I, at one point in my life, I was doing the whole rubber band thing around my wrist. You know, the rubber band, like, oh, I'm reacting. Mm, click. I don't want to react. I want to respond. I want to do this consciously. And when you start to make the choice of how you respond, all of a sudden you have all this power and you, you can start to slow your day down in spite of the fact that everything is going on crazy around you. I love that. Um, would you do me a favor and list out those six distraction categories again? Cause I am for my own self, want to kind of think through those, you know, write those down and think through those. Cause I think that's very valuable. Yeah. And I'll give a little description for each. So spiritual kind of has to do with your values. Are you working somewhere that has the same set of values that you do? So that's what I, when I say spiritual, um, emotional is how well can you regulate your emotions or how aware of you are you of your emotions and how they may be driving you? Because one of the things I like to remind people is that we are not our emotions. We have emotions Everybody has emotions, joy, sadness, anger, you know, happiness. They are not who we are. We are think they're things that we have. Um, so emotional, um, spiritual, emotional, mental. So it's how easy or hard is the task that you're doing at hand? Is the task something you've never done before? So you really need to focus and it's really hard. Or is it something that you are completely bored about because you've done it 500 times? Um, or is it that sweet spot of just challenging enough um, or, you know, that's, that's the wonderful place to be. But if you're at either one of the other sides, too much or too little, you can start to figure out what are you going to do about that? Um, so mental, uh, environmental can be, how's the light? Do you have the right, when you are working on somebody, do you have the right light in the right place? And do you have that piece of equipment that you really need right at hand? Or do you have to get up and walk away? So it, can you change your environment somehow to make it more conducive to what you're doing? Social, which is one of my favorites. Do you have too many people around? Do you have not enough people around? Because everybody's different. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, if you work with a lot of people and you love being around people, but you need to go home and be alone, you know, that's perfectly fine. It's just knowing what's right for you. Uh, let's see, where are we? Physical. Are you getting the right amount of sleep? Are you getting the right amount of food? Are you eating well? Are you exercising? How is your physical being? Um, do you have like a chronic disease that you're not managing well? Um, and that will totally have an impact on um, how you can function and what you can do in, in, in any given day. What have I left out? There's one more. Maybe I haven't. There's going to be a moment, social, spiritual, environmental, mental, physical, and both of the S's, both of the E's, mental. Maybe I got them all. Okay. Yes. What I would encourage listeners to do is to write those out and kind of think through those, because I think so many times we let life just happen to us. And we're not necessarily present enough to say, you know, things are driving me crazy, but we don't really dig into the what and the why. So I think there's a lot of value in slowing down and stepping back and taking a look and, and you know, kind of a, doing a deep dive and a self-assessment of, hey, what is actually going on? Why is it bothering me? And what can I do about it? Because um, I love Mel Robbins, who gives a lot of great advice. And, you know, she always says, no one's coming to save you, you know, as an adult, you're the one that's that's kind of in charge of of you and and what's happening with you. So I think it's so important to do kind of that deep dive and self assessment if we're looking to to promote any kind of change. I love what you said about life happening to me, because we actually we have so much more control over things than we think we do. Um, life happens, 
and we can be engaged in it. And the thing that we have the ability to control is our reactions or our responses. And when we really start to recognize that I'm just responding to the things around me and that the things around me, they're not happening to me. They're just happening, right? It's just the stuff that's around me. And when you can start to recognize that, then you can start to really be like, oh, I have a, I have a choice. I can get angry, I can explode, or I can think of it as an opportunity to not get angry or explode or look at it and be like, why am I getting angry and exploding? And, and just sort of that, that moment of take a deep breath and choose what we can do, which can be very difficult to get to. But when you get to that point, things don't tend to face you anymore yeah. in spite of the craziness that's happening around you. Right. So one thing that we talk about a lot in Bulletproof is what I personally like to call the me filter, meaning we tend to see the world and our challenges through our own personal perspective, which I know makes sense. That's what we know. So that's kind of an automatic thing that we do. And I know you coach about self-awareness and how that plays into navigating our career. So will you elaborate on that? Because I know it's crucial to finding personal fulfillment, but also to providing our patients with the highest level of care. It kind of goes into reevaluating your why. So much of us get into healthcare and it, you know, we, we have these beautiful intentions of I'm going to take care of people. I'm going to see patients. And when we're in school, that's the entire focus. And then when we get out, then we discover the world as it is and the, the pressures of um, unhappy patients, unhappy coworkers. Um, and it's really about remembering why we got into taking care of people. And everybody has a slightly different purpose and why, you know, some people it's like, you know what, this is a career that it's something I can do with my hands. And I love that, or it is taking care of patients, or I always wanted to work in, in some sort of a clinic setting, but really coming back to that, why am I, why am I here doing this? And why am I not making a different choice? Because a lot of times we discover, I, I've had people explore, they're like, I'm going to do something different. And they start to explore the difference. And then they start thinking about what they're going to miss. Oh, you know, I really do like the mental challenge of this job. I do like the actual function. I do like figuring out how to interact with the, with the challenging patient. And so it's really just, it's, um, it's Simon Sinek. It's the five whys. Why? And then asking why and why and why and why that way you actually get to why are you there? What is the emotional feeling? What is the feeling that you get from doing what you do? And then using that knowledge to tap into that when you're having a horrible day. Yeah. Yeah. So like I said, I know we talk about the me filter. I know you talk about some lenses or some filters that we need to consider as we're going through our day and through our career. So will you share those with us? This is some of my favorite stuff to talk about. This is all from uh, Bruce D. Schneider, uh, who is the founder of IPEC, my coaching school. And this is this concept of these energy lenses that we look at, that we see our world through. So like you said, we uh, I like the phrase, um, we do not see the world as it is, we see the world as we are. So we talk about, in my coaching program, we talk about anabolic and catabolic energy. So catabolic energy is this destructive energy that takes things apart and tears things down. So there's a couple of different kinds of this energy. The first level is this victim energy, and it's where the world is happening to me, and it's all purposeful, and I'm a victim, and there's nothing I can do. It's a space of looking at the world as if you are helpless and hopeless. The next version of catabolic energy is a little bit more um, aggressive. It's the whole... I can't win unless you lose. So I'm going to interact with you in such a way that you lose so that I can win. Anabolic or catabolic energy levels one and levels two, um, they can serve a purpose, but most of the time they cannot be sustained and they don't move people forward. They don't create life satisfaction. They don't create a feeling of happiness um, or gratitude or joy. If we start to move into the levels three through seven, those are anabolic and anabolic meaning growth, um, 
positivity, creates life satisfaction, it's creation. So as we move up in anabolic energy in levels three through seven, we go through, we can see the world through phases or through lenses of, of you know what? Yeah, bad things happen. However, so the, the lowest anabolic level is the level of the silver lining. And it's the, you know, yeah, we had COVID, but look at all we learned from it. You know, it's it's always got that yes, but it's the it's the level, it's the energy lens of the workaround. I'll figure it out. We move up higher, it's you know, it's compassion. So so many people who provide healthcare are people who see the world through a compassionate lens of I need to take care of you. So that's the level of of you know, it's about you. It's entirely about you, and my job is to take care of you. Now, people who spend an awful lot of time in level four energy can become pretty burned out yeah. uh, because they are they are just always giving. So it's something to watch for. Those people can get burnt out and then drop down to a level one and be completely exhausted and feel like a victim. So there's a balance there. And then as we work our way up, you know, level five energy is the energy of it's you see every encounter and event as an opportunity. It's... Um, you know, somebody comes in and they're yelling at you and you're like, oh, I get to practice de-escalation and not in any sort of a at least or silver lining. It's truly, I see an opportunity in everything. You know, something happened. Oh, I have the opportunity to learn how to respond instead of react. So that's, and as we move up these energy levels, we're also getting rid of judgment. So we're releasing judgment of ourselves, of other people, and of situations. And when we can release judgment, we have a whole lot less angst and discomfort. Yeah. So yeah. the next level up is the level of flow, which is that when you are like so engrossed in the moment, you have no idea what else is going on around you. Um, some people get that in their jobs. Um, some people, they're like, I would love to have that in my job, and they don't. Um so that's, you know, as we move up the energy levels, that's kind of what we're talking about. The biggest thing that happens as we get more anabolic, as we're looking at the world, is that it's the judgment because we don't waste time judging and, and spending that time in that judgment. And when we can release that judgment, it's amazing how much everything shifts in the way that we see the world. Well, and I think being able to do that creates so much more obviously positivity, but productivity as well. Because if you can make the shift from, it's not about the judgment of whose fault it was and who messed that up and why that went wrong. Instead, it's, hey, this didn't go well. What do we do to make it better? How do we fix it for next time? What can we do to make it better today? And that feels like such a more positive, productive way of approaching something versus you know just being angry about it being wrong and, and somebody having to be someone's fault. Yeah, it's it's this presence in the moment because when we blame, we blame or, or or ruminate about something that has happened, well then we're focused on this thing that's in the past. And so you want to be present so that you can make things better for the next the next thing. The the other thing people do besides ruminating in the past is they have a tendency to worry about the future. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the same thing. You're thinking about something that hasn't happened yet. So be present and be problem solving and be, you know, this is the challenge that we have right now. Let's do something with it and focus on it. And um, you're so much more satisfied with everything when you're doing that. Yes. And I know everything is always easier said than done. Um, what are your recommendations for staying present, for being mindful of that? Everybody ends up with a little different trick. Like I talked about the rubber band thing. Um, I have a I have a thing that I used to do that I would set an alarm and it would go off every couple, maybe four hours, depending on how I was feeling that day. And when it would go off, I would ask myself, what am I thinking? What am I feeling? What am I doing? Just to help create awareness. Regardless, you know, I, I didn't do this always when I was, you know, having a challenge or always when I was super happy. You just, if you start to do that periodically through the day, then you'll start to ask yourself that question without the alarm. And so when you start to, you start to get anxious or you start to get angry or you start, something starts to trigger you. Oh, wait, what am I thinking? What am I feeling? What am I doing? And from that moment, just that little bit of pause, you can make a conscious choice about what you want to do. Yeah. So that's one of my favorite tools. 
Yeah, I like that. I will say, and I'll just be vulnerable for a second, that I find that one of the hardest parts of my day as a hygienist is because you have patient after patient after patient scheduled to come, and you have so much you're trying to achieve within those those you know separate time parameters that there's not always time to complete everything at the at the visit. And when I say everything, and a lot of times for me, this is a lot of times it comes to my notes and what I'm holding in my head that I know needs to make in the note for that last patient. And because it has just, the flow is go going so fast that sometimes I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I'm trying to keep four patients of information in my head to make sure that I can get that note in correctly at the end of the day. And that creates stress in me because I tend to be maybe a little bit of a perfectionist um, and wanting to make sure that I don't miss anything in those notes for accuracy, for future purposes. Um, but that can create some stress. And so I think, well, gosh, I want to stay present in the moment I'm in now with this patient in my chair. I don't want to lose any opportunity for that. But I also don't want to let go of these things to lose them. Do you have any thoughts or recommendations on that front? The first thing I'd like to say is that what you are experiencing is completely normal within the world of healthcare. <laughs> I thought so. Yeah. <laughs> Every single setting, there is this thing about having to remember stuff versus getting it into the computer and getting it saved. And it's important that it gets there. And we all know that, that it's important that it gets there, but it's also important that you have sanity. Um, and, you know, I think it's nice if you can like, proactively kind of think about what is it that gets in the way? Is it the time structure? You know, I don't know if, how much control you end up having over the, the scheduling time blocks, but that's really, I, I mean, it's this, it's the patient after patient after patient. And if one patient takes a little extra time, there your time goes. So I think it ends up the bottom line, just being accepting that the structure is what it is. And um, just taking that breath and going, you know what? This is the way. It, this is the way the the world works in health in in your in your clinic. And when you get to a point where you just say it is what it is, and you truly accept that this is the way it's going to be, then I think at the end of the day, you're much more willing to get those notes put in um, yeah. because because you've been doing it so long I'm anticipating that the you don't lose the not you don't lose the information you're just more annoyed that you have to keep it right and well, and I, there are a few strategies I found that tend to work and I just want to share just for listeners in general is um I am the the queen of sticky notes so I'll have you know my sticky notepad and I'll quickly jot down some things and that way I can kind of let it go from a mental standpoint and still have it there when later in the day to jog my memory um, and then also there are times I use my uh, voice memos on my phone to just throw in a few things that I just don't want to forget. And that allows me to leave behind, you know, so that I can be more present in the moment. And then I'm not worrying towards the future of, oh, my gosh, am I going to have all this to, to get it all correct at the end of the day? So th those are some strategies that I feel like have worked that I wanted to share just because we may have some listeners that are looking for some solutions as well. Yeah. And that's beautiful. It's interesting because in every setting, it's a little bit different. So I, my background of home care, we have people who um, put notes into their phone. They, like you said, they'll record things. Um, I even still have clinicians who write things down on pieces of paper. And then they look at the piece of paper at the end of the day. And they're like, yes, I actually got that documented. Yes, I got that documented. Yep. I, oh, look, look at all the things that I didn't actually forget and throw that one away and start over the next day. I do think it's funny if you, by the, when you write something down or make a point to record it, it's almost like it solidifies it even more so that, but, but you don't have to actively hold it mentally. Yes. Yeah. Um, talk to us about self-awareness and acceptance and conscious choice. So those are three of the foundation principles of the core dynamics coaching program that I do with people, which is a 12 to 18 month program, depending on how we structure it. And those are the three foundations of the 10 disciplines of leadership. Um, awareness is such a big deal. Most of us are not actually aware of who we're being. We do a lot of doing and we're doing the doings and we're, but we're not so aware of who we're being while we're doing the doings. Um, I like to give an example of the difference between um, 
So you, you get a phone call. So you're looking at your phone and the phone rings and it's your very best friend. It's like 10 o'clock on a Tuesday morning, you're at work and your very best friend calls you. Okay, you have thoughts, you have feelings, right? What if your phone rings at 10 o'clock on a Tuesday morning and you look at it and it's the person who annoys you the absolute most at work? Same thing happened. Your phone rang and it was a person, but you reacted completely differently to the exact same thing. All awareness is, is recognizing that, oh, something happened. I had a thought, I had a feeling, and you know, frequently that turns into some sort of behavior or action. But recognizing that your thoughts, your feelings, your behaviors, and your reactions are not who you are. They are things that you do. And that just starting to be aware is like the foundation of being able to let go of judgment. Because if you don't know you're judging things, you can't let go of it. So that's the awareness piece. The acceptance piece is what we kind of talked about before is being present and recognizing that whatever is, is the person who called you, regardless of best friend or most annoying person on the planet, um, somebody's calling you. That's the fact. So focusing on facts and again, letting go of the judgment and judgment, good or bad, you know, you're judging your best friend. Great. Yay. That's judgment. And ooh, ick, that's also judgment. Right. And then at that moment, you can make a conscious choice. Now your conscious choice might be best friend, totally answering the phone. I'm doing this with intention and I know why I'm doing it. The ooh, ick person, you might be like, you know what? I know that I can't talk to them right now. Or it might be, I'm going to talk to them because whatever they're going to impart to me, I can make it quick and I know it's going to be important. You know, it's just being aware that you're making a decision. You're not just reacting to whatever's going on around you. Yeah. Is there anything that you recommend? Because something you just said really resonated with me of, of being mindful of how, you know, this whole podcast is about how we show up, right? How we show up, not just for our patients, for our families, for our team members, that's really important as well, and for, and for ourselves. But is there, do you ever recommend kind of checking in with those around you and seeing kind of like, hey, am I helping? Am I helpful to you? Or, you know, what does that look like? So, yeah, um, one of the things that I have, I have people do at times is just, you know, do kind of a self-assessment of how you think you're showing up and what you think you're doing, and then just asking um, you know, you can do like, a, it's like a 360 evaluation, but it's just like, Hey, and I like people to do it in this kind of a way. What are my, what are my traits when I'm showing up on a good day? What do you see when I'm not showing up on a good day? Um, what do you think my strengths are and what do you think I could improve? And just asking your friend in that way, um, not what's wrong with me. But, you know, what do you think that I could do better and why? Because sometimes what they think you could do better, you're like, you know what? I don't, I don't think I need to do that better. I'm, I'm good with that. Um, but it's being willing to listen because sometimes we are completely blind to the things that we are doing that we would never want people to be reacting to. Um, we're, we're not intentionally creating these reactions, but we're getting them anyway. And I, I think it's really valuable to be willing to listen to other people and be discerning with what you do with the information, but listening, you know, I, um, if we're going to talk about like employment and leadership, you know, being somebody who's a supervisor of somebody else, supervising somebody is a 365 day thing. Feedback is ongoing and back and forth. And when you're willing to listen to what your supervisor has to say and have a dialogue, um, things generally go a whole lot better because everybody's more on the same page. Communication is so key. Oh, oh yeah. We, we, and communication and clarifying to understand what the person is really saying or asking of us because we make all sorts of assumptions in our world that um, if we actually sought to clarify what somebody really means, we probably wouldn't get nearly so upset because we're making an interpretation of something that, that, that is completely not what they intended. And on the converse, we're probably communicating and people are taking our communication in a way that we don't intend at all. So it's you know, being aware that all this stuff happens and being a little more um, forgiving and yes. 
Uh, grace is a big word for me. Um, yes, me too. Me too. Um, and I think, you know, obviously there's, there's got to be a fair amount of maturity there to be able to put yourself out there and say, hey, what could I do better? You know, what what's working for you and what's not? Because, you know, sometimes you're going to get feedback that you don't view necessarily as positive, um, but that doesn't mean it's not correct or true. And maybe, like you said, it's just an opportunity for more growth or change or development. So there's definitely got to be that maturity mindset of like, hey, I may hear something I don't like, but why am I really asking? Because I really want to do, I really do want to be there for people. So I think there's value in that. Absolutely. I, th there's a foundation principle in my coaching program that is we are either growing or we are dying. And so by being willing to listen and hear what other people say, we are, we are growing and we, we get to make some choices from the feedback that we get. And so I know you talked about energy earlier, um, and I think that is a very big part of how we are showing up for team and patients. Um, you know, I think all of us have kind of that, you know, BS reader built in where we can, you know, tell if someone is coming from a place of authenticity and, and compassion and being real versus, you know, I talk to a lot of hygienists that are scared, you know, I don't want to come across as salesy. I don't, you know, so I think there's that kind of sometimes mental block that gets in the way of how we are occurring to others and, and what we want to put out there, but inner our energy and what we're putting out is a big part of that. So how do our energy lenses influence the people that we work with, whether it's patient or team? So this is the thing I love about energy. because And I, I, I'll say this to, you know, scientific professionals and they're like, energy, you, no, woo woo. What I'm talking about when we talk about this is that you, you've walked into a room where people have been arguing and there, there's nobody's making a noise. You walk in and you're like, this is, this is some really negative energy and you can feel that you go to a concert and you'd be like, yeah, the energy of the concert was so amazing. When I talk about energy, that's what I'm talking about. So whenever two people are together, if you're not aware of energy, first of all, um, somebody is always leading and somebody is always following. And generally the catabolic energy is the one that kind of sucks the anabolic energy down to it unless you're aware of this concept of oh I don't have to take on your energy that's that's you and that's you being a catabolic that's you feeling like a victim that's you being angry I don't have to take your energy maybe I can influence you with my energy that's a little bit more optimistic that may be a little bit more um, problem solving you know and sometimes you're not able to influence their energy but at the very least you haven't allowed their energy to suck you into it. Um, and that can make a huge difference. So if you work with somebody who's very, very catabolic, you can, when you start to be aware of this stuff, you're like, oh, they're being catabolic. I don't have to play in that space. I can be in the same room, but I don't, I don't have to go there, which is yeah. can be incredibly powerful and liberating. It is. Yes. Very freeing. And I'm thinking too about patients, you know, sometimes you get those very grumpy patients um, in dentistry. We see a lot of anxious patients um, that, uh, you know, will put off a very closed negative vibe, you know, the very negative catabolic energy. Um, and I find that if you can overcome them with your positive energy, there's a lot of times where you'll see the, the tide turn and all of a sudden they feel more comfortable and they're more at ease and the walls start to drop. And that's when you know you're you're winning and that you really are connecting with them. Yes. And that's, I mean, that's so true. You, if you, and if you fed into their anxiety and stuff and, and behaviors and it would be so, it would be worse for you and it would be worse for them. So when you, cause you're totally leading with your energy when you do that. Yeah. I love that. Is there a way, um, and I know again, everyone's energy is their own choice for what they bring, but there are there ways, simple little things that you can do when maybe your teammates aren't in the best of place that you could use, have some influence over that. So one of the things that I like to do, which isn't always possible, but is to have a shared language. So within a clinic, 
if people can start to use, you know, the shared shared energy language, and it works best with people who are who do have a willingness to grow. Um, but you can start in, and you can start to to take it. It's not about you. Hey, you're having some catabolic energy today. It's just you're having. You're not catabolic. You're having some catabolic energy today, and just having that shared language that kind of takes it apart from the person and who they are, but more like what they're doing and what they're exhibiting. Um, and that comes with teamwork. And you know, when teams can do some, you know, leadership building and team building activities together, not the not not the ones that none of us like to do, um, <laughs> but the ones that create a shared language. Because I find that if people start to talk um, using words like energy and cat catabolic energy and anabolic energy, um, they can start to actually grow as a team more so than if they're they're not speaking as those same terms. Yeah, I like that. So one last thing I want to talk about is um, I feel like Again, in a world of dentistry that can be very hard and challenging, you know, there are those things that we are typically used to running into and we've, you know, figured out how to navigate those well. But sometimes we come up against things that do feel more challenging than we, we might be hoping for. Um, but I feel like obviously growth minded people see those challenges a little differently. But can you help us kind of frame those challenges and how they can actually be builders for us? So I think one of the things to do is to take things from a coach approach. And a coach approach is not a dictatorial, a telling, it's an asking. Um, and it's, it's asking the person who's having that strong reaction or that you're not getting along with, you know, Tell me what this, tell me what you're thinking. Tell me what's going on in your head and seek to understand. And that will go a long way for, first of all, yourself to actually understand what's going on. But the other person starts to feel heard. And when they start to really feel like somebody's listening, that can kind of shift the situation and shift that challenging moment. Um, yeah. Early when you try to do this, it's, it's, it can be hard. It can be like, what am I going to say? How am I going to say this? But asking questions and really listening, um, listening to what they're saying and how they're saying it. Um, and then clarifying. So, like, so what I heard you say was this. Um, and when you feel heard, it tends to bring the energy back to a space of collaboration more so than conflict. Yeah. Um, and I'm thinking too, challenges in a way where, you know, I talk to a lot of hygienists who will say, I just, I'm feeling really burned out because I just feel like no matter what, it's, it's harder. They're asking for more. I'm having to do more. I'm having to do this new thing that I hadn't done before. That's more where I'm thinking from a challenging aspect is helping people. Here's what I think. I think hygiene sometimes can get really boring if we're doing the same thing over and over and over. And that creates that kind of boredom burnout. But then high, then dentistry is changing drastically with new technologies and new findings and new researches, research that's coming out. So you can be on the other end of the pendulum where you're like, oh my gosh, there's so much new and I don't know how to embrace all of this and incorporate all this. And so it's creating burnout on that end. So how do we keep that pendulum more in the center of, hey, I'm really, feeling fulfillment in what I'm getting to do on a daily basis. Yeah. And that's so hard because technology is the, the, the rate of evolution. It just keeps increasing. And it's like, you get something new and, and you read the research and you're like, okay, this is a really good thing. And then six months later, they're like, but wait, there's more, you know? Um, so that, that's such a hard one because it is, it's this mental, it's, what you're talking about is the mental burnout, the boredom versus the over overstimulation. And I think it's recognizing, first of all, that that's what's happening and getting that, you know, there's too much coming at me and I can't keep up. And I, and I'm, I'm not giving myself grace for not being able to keep up. And I think that that's one of the things that needs to happen is to say, you know what, I'm not keeping it. This is more than I feel like I can do. And first that acknowledgement and not, and, and letting go of that judgment, you know, 
I am because we are going to be uncomfortable at times and it's really funny what happens when we just sit and go you know what I'm uncomfortable I can't do this I don't want to do this and first of all it's okay to feel that way there's absolutely nothing that is completely human to be overwhelmed and just first I mean just first accept that it's okay to feel that way and a lot of times we find is that when we give ourselves grace to be like, you know what, this is horrible and it's awful and I don't like it. Um, just by acknowledging that makes it okay to be like, okay, so which one of these things am I going to tackle? Because I can only tackle one of them. But just that start to give yourself grace to be like, yeah, I am fried and I'm burned out and this is horrible. Yeah, I like that. And I like the concept too of it's one thing at a time. Like if you feel like there's too much going on, there probably is. So step back and, and create an order to the way that this you know, you want this to look and then slowly work your way through it. Yeah. Pick that one thing. I actually have something up on my wall that it's a, it's a rectangle. And on the top, it says, what is the next smallest thing I can do? Do that. What is the next smallest thing I can do? Do that. And that slows myself. I'm like, okay, when I feel like I have 20 things to do, no, what's the next smallest thing I can do? Yeah. Oh, look, I did it. What's the next smallest thing? And that will get you through some of those moments um, when you're just feeling like everything's coming at you. Nice. I like it. Well, you have given us so many great tips and concepts and thoughts today, and I love it. What is the, the number one overarching nugget you want to leave us with today? That your energy matters and that you have a choice in how you show up. And that is such a powerful thing. I love that. I love that. And I take that challenge on personally. And I hope all of our listeners are willing to do that as well, because I think it, it is just so instrumental that we show up to be the best version of ourselves for all of those around us in life. There's only one of us. We are made very uniquely. And um, it's really important that we can be that person to those around us. So Vicki, thank you so much for your time with us today and your expertise and your passion and knowledge. I really appreciate it. Very grateful. Um, if any of our listeners would like to dig deeper, will you share how they can engage with you further? So you can find me on my website at inprogresscoaching.com. You can email me at vdlanders at inprogresscoaching.com. Those are probably the best ways to get a hold of me. Awesome. And she's got a great um, website. So check that out. Um, and see everything she has to offer. But Vicki, thank you so much for helping us dig in today and for her helping coach us on how to show up. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. This is fun. And I hope it's helped somebody. Yes, absolutely. Well, thank you so much. And everyone have a great week. Goodbye, everyone.